Number two is to declare. To what? Declare. declare. To what? Declare. declare. Perfect. Why is it important that we declare the identity that we've chosen? The word is powerful. Word is powerful. There's definite decision, declaration. Like when you declare something, it's something that you feel rather than like saying it. Like when you declare it, it's who you, what you believe you are. Yes, if you choose it, that is one thing. It's a thought kicking around in your head. Yeah, this is awesome. This is who I am. When you declare it, when you stand and actually powerfully state your identity, you have spoken it into creation. You have owned it. There is power in that. And it cannot be taken back. The spoken word can never be retracted. The spoken word can never be retracted. And so, if you want to hold on to that identity that you have chosen, declaring it is how you own it. That is the first step to actually owning the choice that you made. So I invite you all to stand, wait, in a moment. <laughs> I will invite you all to stand up, find space where you can spread out as a warrior. We're going to declare these identities. However, there is one thing that I love to use when I do my declarations. Now as you're thinking about your identities as a warrior, Each warrior has a chosen weapon, something they practice with, something they become incredibly skilled with. Mine has become choice. When I picture myself in my highest and best warrior self, it is not with a broadsword, it is with dual gladiuses. This is what I have now. Gladius. You'll have the real thing later on. I am, ha I am manifesting the real thing. The Gladius is a short sword meant both as offense and defense. A dual Gladius requires immense skill to wield. I know many men picture a broadsword. I think I'm looking at one. <laughs> I, a double-handed sword. I spoke with a young man who is smaller than me. He favors a six-foot-long hand-and-a-half sword. And a friend of mine favored a warhammer. Every warrior has a favored weapon. So when you picture yourself as your highest and best, I invite you to picture which weapon represents the warrior that you are. When you think of that identity that you have chosen and are about to declare, what are you holding? What does your armory look like? In my mind, I have two. Cross sheathed on my back. When going into battle, I draw them and I stand ready. When I'm declaring who I am, I choose one of these. This, by the way, my wife brought from Africa. This was handcrafted by the Maasai warriors in Kenya. Wow. This is what they use to kill lions in Africa. They wear their wrap and they go into battle with this, which is super cool. So it doesn't look like much, but when you feel the sharpness of the blade. Yeah. So I. When we declare, I'm going to invite one of you to come up. Actually two, because I have two swords. I'm going to invite two of you up to the stage, and the rest of you will scatter throughout the room. And what I do when I'm declaring, I take one of my hands. I strike my warrior stance, 
I hold my sword above my head. I hold my weapon here, reminding me that I am going to battle. Battle requires tools. And I declare, I am Anthony Denovelis. I am warrior who stands by. Can I share the second half of that? This is the part that gets all my kids cheering. If you want your kids to cheer for you, <laughs> declare your identity every single morning in this manner so that your kids can hear you. And they will start cheering. After you do it a few times, they'll start cheering. They'll start repeating after you. I am Anthony Denovelis. I am warrior who stands ready. Freedom! Do you feel that? Yes. Do you feel the spoke power of the spoken word? What will it do to you when, if every morning you stand and declare your identity before walking into the day? If your family hears you declaring who you are and what it means, pronouncing freedom, we are free to choose to live exactly as we want. Free to protect our family. Free to preside and provide for them the way a warrior does. So I invite you to stand up. Because you two are... Well, who has a feeling that they need to be holding a sword for this declaration? Dustin, I will give you your choice. That is for you. Who would like the Messiah Warriors machete? Funny Spanish word. No takers, no takers. No takers? Josh? Sweet. That is for you. So, Dustin, come stand, face your brothers. Josh, stand, face your brothers. Choose your warrior stance. Is it if it's feet together like this? Mine is standing ready. Choose your warrior stance. Take a deep breath. For those of you who are not holding swords, no, you can put it back up. Feel that power. Open yourself up. Feel the power filling your heart. Pull it from the ground. Think about this identity you've chosen, everything that it means, everybody you are protecting, presiding over, providing for. The world that you are going to change with this identity. Feel it rising up inside of you. And on the count of three, I want you to declare as powerfully as is authentic to you. If that's yelling, if that's screaming, if that is speaking powerfully in a calm and collected voice. Declare your chosen identity and own that feeling. On the count of three. One, two, three. I, I am the like 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 leader. I am the leader. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Give yourselves a hand. That was how <laughs> I felt it. Who wants to share how that experience was for them? Josh? I actually felt it like I felt like I was when I said, like the second I said it, like, yeah, I am that. I've never really stepped into that very much in my life. That was fantastic, Josh. Thank you. There, there is power in Stepping yeah. and declaring. Standing forth and actually owning it. Who else would like to share? Eric. Let's share my great up game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, Moakoa Tanoa. I have no idea what it means, but it doesn't require anything before or after. 
And it doesn't matter if it's spoken loud or soft, but the power is there. I love that. Thank you, Eric. Because when you own your true identity, it doesn't matter if you're yelling it at the top of your voice, or you're looking someone in the eye and saying, I am Anthony Denopolis. I am a warrior who stands ready. I know who I am, and I know my journey. I know my purpose, because I have chosen it. Whether it's shouted from the rooftops or spoken in the quiet of your own home, when you own who you are, the power is the same. Which brings us to number three. Who's ready for number three? Let me Woo! go ahead. Number three is the continuation of the choice. You choose, you do what? Choose. choose. And then you? Declare. Declare. You choose? Choose. You? Declare. Choose. And then you? Declare. Declare. And then? You own it. Who can tell me the difference between owning it and declaring it? Because we discussed how declaring it is a first step to actually <coughs> owning it. Dustin. What comes to my mind is declare is almost like you're borrowing and kind of trying it on and you might not like it and you put it aside and never wear it again. Owning it means that you, you're forever more in that space. It never comes off. If you truly own it, it's always a part of you. Now how, what, what are some ways that we can own our own identity. We've declared it. That is one way. Ethan. So, like you say, all and I started thinking about like one theory of, of property rights, which is the idea that, uh, and it kind of goes to one theory of natural law as well, which is everybody owns themselves, their body, and whatever they improve, that whatever they produce, what they put into the world, and they can exchange that however they want. And so in order to own an identity, you actually have to put effort into it. You can think it, thoughts are free, anybody can have thoughts and you can say those things. But to really own it, you have to put the work into it. Because when you put the work into it, it becomes yours. I love that. Thank you, Ethan. Give me a hand. Before, back before copyright laws and ownership laws, when this country was being built, how did you know somebody owned a plot of land? They built a fence around it. They built a fence around it. They built a house on it. They plowed fields. They put work into it. They had no one to buy land from. They just went out and found this and said, I'm going to build it. And someone who came by said, oh, this belongs to someone because this is what they have made for themselves. Yeah, well, with the homesteading laws, there was actual requirements of improvements that you would have to do in order to, uh, to gain hold of that ownership of that property. I love that. I didn't even know that. Old homesteading laws say that, so what you're saying is, if you wanted to lay ownership to a plot of land, and actually claim it as yours, you had to work to a certain degree to develop that land before it was considered legally yours. Yeah. I love that. What if we did that with our identities? This identity you just chose, to truly own it, there, you believe there was a certain, that in order to own it, you work for it. It's not just, yes, this is who I am, and then I go live however I want, but this is who I am. Yet, what happens if we do that? We become inauthentic. If, you, if your chosen identity is, I am the defender of virtue and chastity, and this is what you declare to the world, and then you go home, and you're viewing pornography, and you're sleeping around, 
Are you owning your title of I am the defender of virtue and chastity? No. And what happens to the people who hear you declare it? They don't believe you. You're not owning it. There are several ways that we can own <coughs> our identity. Can I share with you something that I've done? Yeah. After I chose my identity of the warrior who stands ready, what that means to me is my entire purpose on earth is to do exactly what God wants me to do. That is my purpose on earth. Right now, God wants me to be putting on this program and training other men to discover and decide and choose into their own identities so they can show up in more power in their lives. Right now, that's what he's asked me to do. And so I am here. I am ready, willing, and able to step into whatever he calls me to do. I am the warrior who stands ready. I went home and on my email I changed my little sign off. Did you guys know in Gmail you can like program a signature that shows up on every one of your emails? Probably most email servers do that. But I went in and I changed. It used to say regards and now it's standing ready, comma, Chef Anthony. When people call me because I've owned who I am, they call me and say, hey, I need a breakthrough, I need help, I need, someone needs a blessing, we need, we need food, we need this, we need, I act, because that's who I am. I am the warrior who stands ready, I'm ready to serve where I'm asked to serve. This is how I own my title, this is how I own my identity, because I chose it, and I'm owning it. People trust me and believe me when I say, I'm a warrior who stands ready. So I want you to take the next 90 seconds and write down five or six different ways that you personally are going to own your identity. How that will show up in your life, exactly what you will be doing. Go ahead. Uh, ten more seconds, you guys. And stop. December, the week after we get back. Okay. I'm not sure exactly. Right, I'd love to get some shares. We'd like to share what they're going to do to really own this identity. Eric? I'm going to learn how to spell it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> and find out what it means. If it means anything, it doesn't oh. just me. And, and if it doesn't end up meaning anything, that's okay. You're gonna, it you're gonna own it. It, it means me. you. Who else? Josh. Um, I'm gonna own my opinions and my beliefs, and not speak them as like I could be wrong, <laughs> but like this and this. Like I'm gonna stand more in my power, I guess. So, so how does that look? It's more. Um, sure of myself, 
by not stepping down if someone disagrees with me. She's like, oh, you're probably right. I would like, unless I mean I was wrong, of course. <laughs> but standing by yeah, my very cool evidence saying you're wrong. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. Thank you, Josh. Mm -hmm. Ethan. I uh, one of mine is to take every chance I have to uplift those around me, whether I know them or not. And so, you know, responding to the Walmart creator as you leave the store is have a great day. You too. Just stuff like that. I love that. That's great. <laughs> Walmart creator. Have a good evening. You have an amazing evening too. You're high right. five. Right. Yeah. They smile when you do that. They do. Huh? Oh, especially when you call them by name, because they got the tag. Yes. Did you, uh, would you like to change your yeah. name? Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of similar, but I build up those I lead. And, and so, what does that look like from a leadership standpoint? Uh, like within my own family, it, it's recognizing the talents that my sons have. And helping them see the divinity that is inside of them as well. Because does leadership always mean leading? Does leadership always mean being the person in charge? There's servant-based leadership where you are serving those that you're leading. One of my greatest breakthroughs, it was and is, I am a leader in whatever position I am called to fill. And sometimes it's, I'm the father, I'm the leader of the family, I'm showing up as a father by allowing my daughter to make pizza on her own and leave the kitchen and let her do her thing. And Eric, yes, I see that look. What a mess. <laughs> it, it was a mess and there was pizza everywhere and the pizza tasted like biscuits with canned tomato sauce. Um, <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. And that's leadership. I love that. Build up the people you lead. And sometimes that means allowing them to lead us, following where they go, letting them use their strengths. Awesome. Thank you guys for those shares. We're going to take about a 10 minute break. I'm going to sit down. So feel free to get up. There is soda and water in the break room. You go out the room and Josh can lead you there. He knows where it is. Yep. And in 10 minutes, we will come back. Feel free to check out the tools and the equipment on the table in the back. Discuss with each other your ownership. That's just iron, as far as I know. What is Steel? I, they did not it? tell me what kind of metal it is. Eric I might be able to tell you. It's like it's a draft.